in the weekend, the Matildas, who are the Australian women's soccer slash football, I know there's already been some grief about that uh, in the in the chat team, uh, has come out making a bit of a sort of social media um, post. I want to play this for you, and then I want to have a bit of a talk about it. Here we go. So this is from the Australian women's football team at the uh, Football World Cup, if it wants to decide to play for me, and then we'll go. There we go. As Matildas, we are part of a special group of players. We stand on the shoulders of giants who have paved the way to afford the opportunities we have now. In 1995, the Matildas qualified for Australia's first Women's World Cup, starting a legacy we build on today. Those that came before us showed that being a Matilda means something. They showed us how to fight for recognition, validation and respect. They showed us how to leave the shirt in a better place for those yet to come. 2007 was the first World Cup I played in and it was the first time FIFA awarded prize money to women. 25 years after the men. In 2010, we fought for our first CBA with basic pay. We won the Asian Cup and went back to our part-time jobs. In 2013, we signed a new deal to make sure we got our laundry done for us. In 2015, FIFA made us play the World Cup on artificial pitches. The grass was fake and the disrespect was real. Later that year, we took a stand for some real progress in our next CBA back home. Just like we do on the pitch, we stuck together, refused to back down and got the result. Now we're treated as serious professionals with fairness and respect that women deserve. For us, this World Cup is a celebration of that progress that we've had to earn every step of the way. As our platform has grown, we've shown the world that women's football is a powerful force for good by supporting the causes close to our hearts. We've come a long way in a short time. It's been humbling and life-changing for all of us. But we're not stopping now. 736 footballers had the honour of representing their country on the world's biggest stage this tournament. Yet many are still denied the basic right to organise and collectively bargain. Collective bargaining has allowed us to ensure we now get the same conditions as the Socceroos, with one exception. FIFA will still only offer women one quarter as much prize money as men for the same achievement. And our sisters in the A-League women's are still pushing for football to be a full-time career so that they don't have to work part-time jobs like we had to. So we call on our fans to go all in at the tournament and continue that support by getting out to an A-League women's game to lift up the next generation of Matildas. We call on those who run the game to work to provide opportunities for girls and women in football, whether that be players, coaches, administrators or officials. And we call on all those in positions of power across football, business and politics to come on this journey with us to make women's football as big as it can be here and around the world. We know that with the privilege of being a Matilda comes enormous responsibility. We'll do everything we can to make the country proud when we take the field, and also to leave the shirt in a better place for those who follow in our footsteps. This is our legacy. 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 So, Chewy, initial thoughts around that. We're going to go a bit deeper into this, but initial thoughts, there's nothing in there that seems particularly bad. I mean, I mean, I think most people would kind no. of go, all of those things, the collective bargaining, all that kind of stuff, completely on board with, yeah? Yeah, and, and look, I, as you quite often point out, I don't follow professional sports or, or, oh, or many I didn't know sports that. I thought, at all. I thought you were a huge I, fan. Is, is, is that new information to you? So, I mean, just looking at it from from i guess a, a parody or fairness point of view yeah they're all making good points i will make one one cheap shot um they did say leave the 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 shirt in a better place i i would hope that they would all get new shirts yeah that's fair is, and clean. is that unfair well. no no it's good yeah. it's fair but but i mean some of some of the things that they mentioned for a top flight sports team does seem like a real fucking slap in the face when you compare it to the men's like part-time uh, work men's feet but part-time work um having to argue for for someone to do the laundry uh to having to play on an artificial turf which is a completely different experience some of that just does seem like fucked let's yeah. be honest yeah and maybe maybe there is an argument for for you know whenever people are talking about this it's pay and conditions yeah maybe they could just improve the conditions i i, well, I don't know well this is the question the gender pay gap right now that women get paid less than men at the FIFA World Cup. In fact, they talked about one quarter of the prize pool. I've got it right here. We're going to actually have a look. Oh, I better go on the side so people can see it. There we go. Well, have a look at this. This is a video, and I've actually got the link in the in the show description tonight, so you can go look at it yourself. It's by a guy called in America called Nate the Lawyer. Now, Nate the Lawyer did this really deep dive because this happened in America, where the American women's football team 
was saying the same things. The gender pay gap, it's not fair. We're not getting paid the same as the men. It's not appropriate. We're the world champions. They didn't even make the World Cup. Why should they earn more than us? All, all sound like amazing points. So Nate, the lawyer, who was a lawyer, did a bit of a deep dive. And here's the World Cup. And as you can see, it's a quarter. So if the, if the American women's team, which is here, uh, won the World Cup, each player would get $110,000. If the American men's team were to win the World Cup, they'd get $407,000. Seems incredibly un... Yep. Can I just ask an ignorant fucking point of clarification? Yep. This is obviously the US team. Is this the same for every country's team? No, it's it's not going to be the same overall. But okay. I mean, they, they mentioned a quarter of the winnings. There's a quarter. So that's, you know, yep. because the so World this Cup, money the, isn't coming from FIFA. It's coming well, no, from... Well, no, no, no. The World, Cup, the World Cup winnings would be coming from FIFA. The ones at the top here are friendly. So that's games between, you know, the USA and Mexico or something. Mm. That the men got 17,000 a game and the women got eight and a half. If, it was, if they won, if it was a tie, they got eight and one. And if they lost, the women would get nothing. Now that sounds terrible, yeah? 5,000 for a loss or nothing for a loss. When, the, when Nate the lawyer got into it, right... He explained a little bit about what went on. And let me, I'm going to play you a little bit of his law. This is not, again, to negate any of your uh, personal beliefs around the gender pay gap. This is trying to unpack this conversation and then say, there is a gap. We can see it. Is it valid? Yes or no? If it is valid, why? If it's not valid, how do we fix it? So this is a little bit about Nate, the lawyer, who's talking about why the American women and the American men uh, were getting paid so uh, differently. But it's only part of the story. See, the women also get employee benefits from U.S. soccer that the men don't get. What are the employee benefits at the women's national? So let me explain this. So both the men and the women's team during this, this is a couple of years ago, they had a collective bargain agreement and they came to the table and they were both offered exactly the same deals. And the women didn't want the deal which the men took, which basically went, you get paid to play and that's it. Right. So in other words, if you're if you're the 13th player and you're not on the roster, you get zero. Right. If you're the 12 players that are there playing, you get paid that money. You don't get anything else. You get no health benefits. You get nothing else at all. You just get paid to play the game. The women, they chose the and they, they had the opportunity to pick that. They, they chose not to. And what they chose to do was take a much um, maybe more holistic way of getting paid, which means they get paid less for playing the games. But they got many more benefits. And this is what Nate's about to explain. Oh, interesting. Yes that the men's national team does not. First, they get 20 players at a base salary of $100,000. So that's play or not play, right? So the men only got paid no. if they pulled the jersey on. Then they also get 11 more players with the base salary of sixty-two to $67,000 who play in the National Women's Soccer League. They also get a one-time signing bonus of $230,000. They also get ticket revenue sharing of $150 per ticket at the events. They get $5,000 bonuses for first place in the She Believes tournament or at the Four Nations tournament. They also get severance benefits, injury protection, health benefits, dental benefits, vision insurance, pregnancy pay, guaranteed rest time, childcare assistance, partnership bonuses tied to increased viewership. They get annual payments for use of their player likenesses. And U.S. Soccer makes a good faith effort to have a minimum number of games. And the women's team, or offered two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand for a post World Cup tour. Remember, none of this is offered to the men. So this chart looks a little deceptive. So instead, of so in other words, the men get paid to play, the women get paid to play, and they get all the benefits. This is what he who was just demonstrating. Of this chart, let me lay it out so you can actually see what the women get versus what the men get. And this is it. So in 2017, when the women approved this deal, these were the headlines: U.S. Women's National Team CB a victory for all American women soccer players not just the best ones. Women's soccer scores higher pay, better conditions, and new labor agreement. An important step, U.S. women's soccer team reaches new labor deal. ESPN reports that Mega Rapino said at the time, I am incredibly proud of this team and the commitment we have shown through this entire process. While I think there's still much progress to be made for us and for women more broadly, I think the Women's National Team Players Association should be very proud of this deal and feel empowered moving forward. So it was shocking that two years later, after agreeing to this deal, the women's U.S. soccer team sued for gender discrimination. So the reason they sued for gender discrimination was if they had have taken the men's deal, they would have earned more. They had the opportunity to take the men's deal and they took the, the, the other deal, which gave them more security, but less money. And more people, more players earned, mm -hmm. even ones that weren't playing, but less money. But when they got to the end and they won the World Cup, they realized if they had have signed a men's deal, then the players in that team would have earned a lot more. And then they started to say, and this is not fair. U.S. Women's National Team sues soccer's governing body for gender discrimination on International Women's Day. So the Women's National Team agreed 
to this deal, rejected the men's deal, and then sued for the men's deal. So what was the women's national team's argument? Well, their argument was the bonus schedules were different. And because these bonus schedules favor the men's national team, for instance, if they win the World Cup, they would have made more if they were under the men's deal. They were being discriminated against as women, and this discrimination was illegal. Now, you would think the women would have been asking simply for the men's deal, like this. Essentially, the same pay-to-play structure as the men's deal, right? You get all the money without any of the benefits. But you would be wrong. The women weren't asking for the men's deal. They were asking for this. They were asking for the same money as the men, but also keeping the same benefits that they already have. And they went to court and sued. Here is what the court said about the women asking to be paid not equal to the men, but more than the men. This so there you go. That, we're not going to go into the details of that. So that was the situation with that. Now, the reason I bring that up is to, I, I want to, I'd love to have a really honest conversation with some people far more knowledgeable, knowledgeable than me about the, the women's, the gender pay gap. And this is only to do with soccer, because Chewy, I'll ask you one more. I'll ask you one other thing. So the one other thing that I want to show you as well is what the companies earn. The companies being FIFA, the men's and women. Yeah, there's, well. there's a couple of comments about that that I've started. So here's this: uh, FIFA will generate record revenues of 11 billion dollars by the end of the next financial cycle. They don't split up how much they're earning off the men's and women's football world cup. Right, so you, you can't get to that breakdown for which will generate more. But what you can do is you can look into what the uh, the broadcast deals were for those because they do itemize those. So for the men's, FIFA had completed broadcast deals worth one point eight five billion dollars for the twenty eighteen and twenty twenty two World Cup. So let's just say they're a, a billion dollars each. So each of the men's um, football World Cup has broadcast deals of a billion dollars. Uh, the women's had a broadcast deal of two hundred million. They were hoping for 300 million. They've had to settle for about 200 million. So the broadcast deals alone is worth five times as much for the men's as for the women's. So we know that they make more money off that. Now, again, I see you. I see you kind of shifting in your seat there, Chewy. So here's I'm, I'm my chewing question. on something. Here's my question. And you, you, you do sales, Chewy. If uh, someone, if you were a commission-only salesperson, and someone I'd kill in, everyone I work with, and and someone in your store. <laughs> someone in your line of business bought in a million bucks a year. Should they earn more than someone in your store who bought in 200,000 a year, if it was commission only? And if that's the case, why is that fair? If this pay gap's not fair, only talking about soccer here, Chewy, and we're only talking about it because it's the FIFA Football World Cup here in New Zealand. There yeah, you go. Yeah. That's all the information, Chewy. Look, I, I, I think, and, and there's a couple of, I'm, I'm going to bring up a couple of comments because yeah, please. You know, they Educate echo some of people. my thoughts here. Um, Kim here says, I get the money generated argument, but sporting bodies can't do no promotion, no investment in grassroots, no decent TV coverage and no decent competition for women's sports and then wonder why there's no money. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, this is the whole thing is I, I don't think that they're looking at, at it from a, from a growth point of view they have literally just split men's and women's and gone ah not as many people know about or watch the women's game i think if they wanted to expand this that they would go okay the men's sport at the moment generates more money but we want to increase our offerings so we're going to siphon some of that money off into the women's game and we're going to invest in that the same way that we do the men's we're going to make sure that we promote it we're going to make sure that they get the same benefits, that they, we, we have the money so people can dedicate their whole lives to this rather than a part-time job, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then, naturally, the viewership and the attendance on the games will increase and the sport will get better. And then that's that's the question of equality solved, right? That would also like, involve, I, I, so you're, I, you're talking about the investment into that, which I agree with, yeah. but then that also has to come from somewhere. Like if we bring this back to a business. Yeah, it comes from the it, men's games because that, yeah, that's already if, had that groundwork done. Right? Sure. So therefore, if you've got a store, uh, company X in Tamuka, that's got one person in it that's making you know X amount of money, and then you've got a store in Auckland that's got 100 staff and they're making 10 times as much, the store in Auckland needs to carry the store in Tamuka with their profits to help Tamuka get up to speed for the store in Auckland, even yeah, well, though... Potentially, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
you know, and and and, and that's a, you know using the salesperson analogy, right? You've got a top flight salesperson, you've got someone that's just come into the sales floor, and we don't know their potential. Yep. Maybe you get that top flight salesperson to dedicate some of his time to training the new guy, and then you've got two top flight salespeople after a slight reduction in the in the first guy's take home. You know that that sort of thing. I, yeah. I I I I really really agree that this is worth arguing for, and I think that the women are arguing from a point of we have had no attention yeah, to yeah. our part of the sport, and we're expected to be at a hundred straight away. Well, let me ask you this you know, then: in, can, in theory, can you can you remember the, more interest in the women's World Cup before three years ago? You talking about rugby or foot or soccer football? No, I'm talking, we're still talking about football. Okay. Um, so, I FIFA don't, I don't. Women's World Cup, has it ever been on your radar? No. You know, further back than three years. But the only reason it's on my radar now is it's in New Zealand. That's the only reason. I mean, it's it's, it's the US national team that put women's football even on, on my radar as someone that doesn't follow sport. Yep. Right? I was like, oh, Americans playing football. Whatever will happen next? Oh, and the ladies. How exciting. You know, um, that, that sort of thing. But yeah, I, I, I think I think the comparison and the two different deals is is very interesting. Like that it's a bit of benefits package overall than what the men get. And maybe the argument is like, yeah, okay, if you're suing for equality, absolutely we're gonna give the men benefits as well. Well they, they because say, I mean this they, is they, the whole thing with, with, if you watch, with sports if you watch remuneration, full, right? Yeah let me let me tell you if you watch that full documentary, like the full 15 minutes, which I've seen quite a long time ago, um you'll also hear that yes the women would have made more if they'd gone on the men's, you know, the men's hmm. offer. Uh but the men would also have made more if they'd gone on the women's offer. So then are they yep. going to sue to get the other option? I think a little bit about it. Like the last two times I fixed my mortgage, I've made a mistake. Like right before COVID, I fixed it right before COVID. And then after COVID, everything went down and I was stuck with this. I made a bad decision. Unknowing to me, I made a bad decision, which subsequently, if I could have gone back and renegotiated, I would. There's also this idea of that. I mean, we're not really necessarily talking specifically about the American women's from a couple of years ago. But, you know, you, you make the deal, you see it through. And then at the end of it, you renegotiate and you and you get it better. You don't make a deal that you're happy with. And then when you realize that you actually should have, you know, fixed your mortgage six weeks later, then jump up and down about it because there's there's not much you can do. There is an element of that in this conversation as well, but it's not the main yeah. focus. The main focus is this. Um, the, the WNBA does this a little bit because basically the WNBA, which is the NBA for women, doesn't make any money and it gets supported by the men's game because the men's game is, I think, it's probably the right. most profitable in yeah, the yeah. world. Where, at, what, at what point do you stop the equality in money? So like um, Lionel Messi, arguably one of the, if not the greatest, the greatest football player in the world at the moment, should the top woman in the world, the equivalent, be the paid the same as him? What if he generates a thousand times more income? So I, I guess I'm being a little bit cold and calculated here, but I'm thinking about it from a from a business thing, and, and you're kind of speaking it almost from a sociological and a, and I, the, the the right way to do things. So how do how do oh. we square that circle? I, I I'm just sitting here going if you've got, if you've got a lot of interest in the men's side of the game, um, you know, and you want to grow the overall business of say FIFA, yeah, you know, as a global entity, then your your best room for expansion is the the market that you haven't had a go at yet, which is the women's game. Unless, unless people aren't, I mean, this is, sounds really cutting. I don't follow soccer. So I can say this without shitting on the women versus the men because I don't watch any of it. But unless the women aren't as enjoyable to watch. I mean, we've all heard those stories about, like the the Matildas, actually. I saw a story the other day about the Matildas being beaten by a group of 15-year-old boys in Australia just because of the biological difference. Oof. You know, that's, that's just what they, that's what happens. You know, it's like, well, maybe it's... Like, it's, it's... <laughs> Maybe like the great, the, the greatest female jobs. tennis player in the world, Serena or Venus, Serena Williams, who I would watch every every day of the week, beaten by the two hundred and fiftieth male player in the world. So, I, I wonder, like you're saying, that's the area of growth, is it? What if for like the WNBA at the moment is losing audience? No one wants to watch it. I don't know why. I don't watch it, but nobody wants to watch it. What what about that element? If people aren't interested, do we then go again down a sociological conversation? Why don't we want to watch it? Is it just because we're all misogynist, chauvinist pigs and we only want to watch, you know, the faster, stronger, better? 
or is it that it's just not as enjoyable to watch, therefore it garners less of an audience, therefore it garners less money, therefore it garners less money for the players? Is it as simple as that, or am I just being a buff-headed, you know, southern I, man not I am certainly not not equipped enough to decide because I've never watched sport. <laughs> me too, me too, um, me too. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's, you know, part of me th- goes, you know, if we're talking about the WNBA or whatever, ha- has the NBA given it enough runtime? Oh, it's been over 20 years. You know, yeah. 20, 20 years? Give okay, it maybe they have. <laughs> I don't know. But also, I, I think about the, you know, I, I can only, my only point of reference is what little I know about the Premier League, right? And And the and the budgets that those teams deal with and, and that sort of thing and the and the salaries that they pay their top flight sports people. I know they're trading their fitness. You know, they're gonna, you know, make big money and then they're gonna blow out their their knee and never play again. So they've got to make the money while they can. That that yeah. is an aspect of sport. But when these guys are getting paid, you know, 30, 40 million a season, yeah. yeah. I'm like, mm. Maybe you can shave off a couple of million and flick it to the ladies, eh? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, no, look, Just maybe? I, I, it's interesting, eh? Because, like, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm thanks to my father, I'm a rugby is my religion. And if I, I, I like, Ruby Tui is one of my favorite athletes in the world, one of the most skillful rugby players I've ever seen, you know? Like, just amazing. And I've done a podcast with her, just an amazing human being as well. But if I had a chance to watch her or uh, watch Will Jordan, who is an all-black winger at the moment, who's like a phenom in the world, I'd watch him a hundred times to one. And it's got no, it's not actually a commentary on her. It's more of a commentary on him because, you know, she's amazing. Like, like I, I, I wouldn't take her on. She'd fucking knock me out in a heartbeat. Um, but then I'm not an athlete. Um, and I just wonder how much of this comes down. Like, like when it comes down to watching sport, which you're not a fan of, Chewie, and I'm not an expert to speak to, um what what are we watching for we're watching for the pinnacle of the sporting achievement and i think i saw someone go past in the in the um chat before talking about paying the men's no one seems to have a problem with paying the men's netball team less than the women's netball team the silver ferns because Mm. the silver ferns generate a shit ton more money and they're world champion they're all this and they're that um the men's is basically a an amateur team of you know of wannabes um, yeah. but they don't get paid. Well, look, my, my argument stands on that. You know, if, if women's netball is making bank and they want to expand, expand it out, give it to the men. Yeah. Give some to the men, lift them up as well. Like, it's, it's just from a business point of view, it's like you're always wanting to expand your business, you're always looking for growth. So, yeah, but there's also this idea, there's, there's, has, there's also this idea in business of going narrow and going deep. Like, we've talked about TYT in the last oh, yeah. while, the Young Turks. And TYT is imploding at the moment. And what's happening is they're shutting down shows because the only thing that rates on TYT is the main show and John Ayad Riola's show. So in other words, they might make 5%, well, let's be honest, half of 1% more money on this show, but it might cost them 10% more. So there's that adage about going narrow and going deep as well. I guess I'm not talking about sport because I agree with grassroots, building from the grass up, getting more people involved. But if you're thinking about from it, because we're talking money, let's be honest, we're talking money here because that's what the gender pay gap is. You know, you, the idea of at some point, you know, you you would generally pick your, your, your most successful business stream if you can make 95 percent of your money on one business stream and you've got 10 other business streams making up the other five percent then you're going to put much more focus in that one i'm yeah. only talking financially that's all like yeah. like in a, in, a, in a telco if 99 percent of your sales are iphones then that would probably fill 99 percent of the wall space um and, and the others would be in a little corner over there because no one wants them you know what i mean and it doesn't no no I'm saying there's, that. there's a well, reason for that that i can't yeah, talk should. about but, no it should, uh, I should but yes <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of other chats I, I'm going to bring this one up because I have watched Welcome to Wrexham, yeah. I love that program uh, US women's team was recently beat, beaten by Wrexham FC 12-0 but it wasn't actually the Wrexham FC top team it was like their B team uh, and, and oh that's Rex- worse that's yeah, the Rex- better, that's worse the, no I, I said it's not quite accurate just to say Wrexham and, and you have to remember Wrexham is like a second or third division team um, and they were playing against the world champions. So, look, I don't think there's a, we don't need to shit on people because they have different, you know, there's, there's, there's a different physical biology to men from women. You know, really the only things that we compare, and it seems to be, 
if it's a physical thing is long distance running women sometimes beat men in those ultra marathons is about the only thing when it comes to speed and power men have a massive advantage males have a massive advantage over females if we're going to use the correct terms because i know people will go about saying that male the male physique has a massive advantage to the female uh, physique i don't think it's not to shit on a female physique to say the male physique is you know is is going to dominate in that sport where that involves power and speed it's how it is um the question comes back again to though and this gender pay conversation is purely around sport what is the what is the situation i remember ronda rousey getting asked this question at a mm. ronda rousey's mma chewy i'm um, getting asked the question I'm about the, high, the highest paid fighter in mma and her response was uh, she it was a question from a reporter who was something like you know should should uh, are you going to fight to have other women getting the same same kind of deals as you get and ronda rousey said well i bring in the most money so i get paid the most it seems pretty clear there and like i said women's netball team the silver fern seems pretty clear there but when it's flipped over the other way there seems to be a conversation and a conjecture which i'm not saying there shouldn't be but it's just I, I i think it's more as is always the case chewy these conversations are more nuanced than either side would tend to throw at us from their headlines That's oh what I'm 100%. Saying. Look, this, <laughs> look you could distill that down to basically any topic we talk about right yep. that you, you can have a you always dig deeper than just the headline context is important and that sort of thing but I think I think just generally when it comes to sport, I mean this happens at the Olympics and that sort of thing. How the how the women competitors get treated differently from the men and and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, everybody's entitled to fight for for something that's better. I, I think the US men's team needs Agreed. to fight for those benefits. Yep, <laughs> agree. And I also think I also think the men's team should be fighting for what's fair for the women's team. But then the question's going to be what's fair. And even if it's Are not we fair, talking about collective action, Pat? <laughs> Are we going to let the red flag fly? <laughs> even if it's not, for example, financially fair, it might be morally fair. It might be, as you said, Chewy, an investment, if even, if, even if it disproportionately financially advantages one side, it might be an investment for 10 years from now, there being more female teenagers playing that sport. So it could be looked at like that as well. So.